I would see like people doing Tinder pranks on YouTube. So it made me think, oh, I should do that too. So I matched with a girl on Tinder. I took her out on a date as a prank. I pulled up in a really beat up old car. I don't know why. I was so blind at that moment that I thought her reaction was going to be, oh my God, that's so funny. I'm on a prank show. Oh, you got me. But her her reaction was like that twitchy face where it's like you're about to cry. Oh. And oh my God, dude, I'm such a terrible person. That's actually horrible. And then, and then, and then, and then she said, and this line stuck with me forever. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Pull Out Podcast. This is episode, I believe, number six. So we're back to back to back six weeks in a row. This is getting crazy. Uh, number six out of, from 80. So 85. Episode number 85. Well, 86. how do you know it's 85? Because 80 is number one. But like, are you confident? Because it would be awkward if the people who are listening to it hear that it's that number and then this? it's not right. No one in our audience knows how to count anyways because they're listening to us. So we're safe. Anyways, this is back to back. We, we've been on it. Uh, so we're going to keep the ball rolling. Make sure to check out the Pull Out Blogs channel. We already have some blogs up. Make sure to check those out. Uh, you know, it's just us doing stuff behind the scenes. Amazing stuff. So everyone um, needs to check out those vlogs. It's very weird that Alejandro always says blogs with a B, but you know that it's vlogs, dude, right? It's the same thing, dude. It's the same shit. It sounds no, no, insane. a blog means a written piece online. Video like blog. an article. Okay, I'm going to pull out video vlogs. Well, that's why they were named vlogs because no, it's a cor- video blog. Correct. Yeah, you corrected at the end, but you didn't like you. So you said vlog at the end of your fucking pitch. Dude, I don't think anybody actually thinks about that. You said no, anybody? no, everybody, because everybody's like, "What is he anybody. talking about? An online dude, article? Dude, nobody he, knows does what he a, want me to read?" No, dude, nobody. That's knows what, what people are thinking is. every time you say that. No one I ever guarantee that. you. No one ever Even I that. think that, and I know you, and I hear blog, and I, it throws me <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, dude, how do you want me to say it? I want you to say. Vlog. vlog 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 and then moan v- at the v- end v- 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 can you say v- vlog vlog v- vlog say v vlog no v vlog no without the l okay v v v v, v-, v- all right now now do it slowly v- 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 okay now say vlog blogs oh you did Vlo- that on purpose. No, wait, hold on. Vlogs. Vlogs. No, no, you said vlog. Okay. <laughs> That's what I used to call my vlogs because my name was Phil. Really? Did you actually do that? Vlogs. Whoa. So Vlogs is vlogs better? Can I say vlogs? Vlogs. There vlogs. we go. Now you're saying vlogs. It. Dude, you're pissing me off. Vlogs. There's no way you're being serious Dude, right now. Honestly. It sounds the same. Vlogs okay, or vlogs. Okay, There's okay. no way. Are Let's you okay, okay, actually okay. not okay. to pronounce vlogs or not? <laughs> it's vlogs okay, okay, and okay. shit. Jesus. We're, we're, getting, we're, we're getting too worked up over Video vlogs. Here, I'm going to say video logs. Make sure to check out our video logs. <laughs> this podcast is very informative. Um, <laughs> anyways, we have vlogs out there. Video ones on the YouTube channel. Yes. And uh, go check out our Instagram, Big Time Producer. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> I don't really mean that because some people actually think I'm being serious by calling myself Big Time no, Producer. No, no, but you have to lean into the bit. You can't say it's funny. Because Stacey thinks it's a horrible name for an Instagram handle. It's not... It is horrible. It's not good. It's just. It's not good. I don't know about horrible, but it's. Uh, it could use some work for sure. And uh, we have <laughs> Phil Gilbert, right? Is that your best name? Dude. That's your Instagram handle. Yes. And so, then we have Steezy Kane. Uh, yes, I am Steezy Kane. So guys, make sure to follow that because we need followers so we can get women. Well, Steezy doesn't need any more. Uh, but me and Phil need this. What are you talking about? You don't need followers because well, you're enlightening. You're you have like a hundred thousand. What? Oh my God! Everyone's having three different conversations. Because he's not listening. Dude, he's drinking water, thinking of something else. Drinking <laughs> water causes me to be distracted. Yes, dude. Anyways. <laughs> oh my fuck? God. Also, no. make sure. So we don't have a Patreon anymore, but we do have this YouTube thing where you can join our YouTube channel with for one dollar. That's tier number one. You can support us. It's just to support that you like the podcast, and we see that like okay, dude, people fuck with us. They want us to shoot more podcasts. And there's what? Let's say there's 5,000 of you guys watching. If already pays $1 a month, that's 25 cents per episode. You're paying 25 cents per episode. But if everybody does, that's $5,000 that we can use for the podcast and for vlogs. So, there you, go. you know, that's good. And, dude, there's a $5 tier. I forget what that one gets, but... Uh, 
Well, I'm glad we're selling it correctly. Yeah, just check out the tiers, the numbers are there. You probably get something really cool. Probably get something really cool. Uh, hey, for five dollars, you might get something better. Hey? <laughs> well, check out the, it says it on the tier. I just forgot again, what it was. again. This is all a hundreds podcast now, so yeah, but just uh, it's everyone's until watch when the money comes in. I'm glad you're saying this because when the money comes in, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's split it, buddy. Uh, anyways. Um, Steve says that because unless I get canceled, he doesn't have any attachment to it. That's not why I say it. I just say it for um, isolation purposes. There we go. No, no, no. Okay. The little what I, I no, said. I, I say it just to simplify it in my mind and 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 ease my um, not to stress out too much. Ease my my yeah. my obsessive control disorder. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, join those tiers, guys. They actually help. We actually had like five people join from the previous podcast. Mm-hmm. So that was some money stacking up. And we're actually getting paid $5 for every 1,000 views. Okay, that's dope. So if we get 5,000 views, that's $25. Is it $5? Well, never mind. 25 Yeah. 5 for times 5 is 25 no, That's how math for works. For 5,000 views, you said? Yeah, it's 25 bucks. Oh, that was just a weird number to choose. I thought you would choose something with any with a zero. Well, like, no, we got 5,000 views. What do you mean? And like 10,000, you know how it's like 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Well, we don't get 10,000 views. Well, but I... Maybe we will. Maybe by this time, maybe I by mean, the time dude, this podcast comes out, we are getting 10,000 views. You see, that's Hopefully. a limiting belief right there. That's your Hopefully. problem, bro. I think I, you're, I think it. we managed to get 10,000 views by the time this podcast comes out. Do you think so? By then, your video should come out, shouting it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll get, we'll get back up there, definitely. The past one got 5,000 views released a week ago. No shout outs, no nothing. Just posting it and having Steezy's name on it. So that's a good sign. 5,000 views in a week. Uh, anyways, make sure to join those things, guys. It really helps out because we have no brand deals. And we say shit that cancels us. So worst scenario, we have you guys to give us food. Money for food. Yeah. Um, right. So having said that, me and Phil are going to Costa Rica in two days. That's and crazy. And Steezy agreed to come for one week. What are your thoughts on that? I did not... I did not. <laughs> no, he did. He told me, hey, no. what if I come for one week? I said that, but I, I'm not being serious. I can't think what the fuck? That's fucked up. <laughs> no, it's just like a what if thought. It's, that's all it is. But I'm, I can't. I can't. Ask come. him why he can't come. And look what he tells you. Well, he can't come because he has erectile dysfunction. How does that, how does that make sense to anything? Because coming oh, no, is when you bust a nut. Yeah, when you bust so if you nut. can't get hard. Uh, you can't come. It was okay. a bad joke. But anyways. Continue. Yeah, it was It was a riddle. It was a riddle. <laughs> um, wait, hold on. What were we doing? You're, he was saying at, for me to ask you why you can't come to Costa Rica. I can't come because um, I need to be very cautious with how I spend money right now. I told him we got him covered. No. No, no, no. I mean, bro, the ticket is like $1,000 right now. Dude, I told him he no. can pay us later. No. So those are two different things okay. what you just said, by the way. I'm like yeah. seven. Uh, well, I was $30,000 in debt. I got my debt down to 7500 that I still have to pay right now. I don't want to add another 1000 to that. Yeah, dude, you can always get money back. But think about this, dude. His, we're all young in our 20s. When are we going to get a chance to travel to your home country for two weeks when he doesn't have like a I mean, big project? That's true. That's, that's true. The way you say it makes it sound like, damn, I am young. I need to be taking opportunities. The, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something my brother told me before I went to Spain for a month. And it was a lot of money. Like, but, you know, I could afford How much it. was it? Well, it was 2500 So I would go in a second after spending 5000 in Vegas. Think about that. You could have gone to Spain trip. twice. You could have gone to Spain twice. Holy shit, dude. I didn't even think about that. Vegas changed me as a man. That is crazy. Imagine, dude, you could have gone you twice. You could have gone actually. twice. Now, with that, with that Steezy short film, he could have gone... 10 times. <laughs> what is this, a competition? You got on 12 times. No, no, with that. Okay, I was... 12 times. Hold on, let me do the math. Let me do the math. 12 times. I was... Okay, I lost $25,000. That's how much money I lost out of my pocket. So 10 times. So 10 times. Okay, yeah. damn. By the way, I was in that Spain hurts. when you were that doing... That hurts a lot. You were, do, you were doing your uh, film, the short film over there. But when weren't you there? No, I was... Well, I'm asking you just to make sure when we... Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm not going to remember the dates. It was October? September. October, September? No, I wasn't there October. Could, uh, well, I was in London in October. 
Sounds so cool to say that. I love saying that. that. I was you, in, say I was, you were in Costa Rica in, in February. No, I was in London in October. I was in Amsterdam. I was in Amsterdam in September. That sounds so cool to say. So, yeah, basically we were in Europe at the same time, and I remember messaging him, yo, I can pull up. And what did he say? Yeah. Complete what did he say? rejection. He didn't even fucking message me. Bro, because I was going through <laughs> fucking hell, bro. You don't want you remember, to see him I like remember, that. I remember there were... Um, uh, you texted me that, and also... Um, Catherine, longtime friend that directed the short film I was in, the first one, texted yeah, yeah. me that, and what I guess I ignored both film? of you guys. Huh? What was the name of that short film? Uh, Street Street Flame. Street Flame. Yeah. Um, she's big time now. She's directing a feature film about a K-pop artist. It's like a huge million dollar budget or whatever. Damn. Yeah, she's uh she's big time. But um, I'm big time. Yeah, I mean, I I just remember like I got those messages and I was just like. Did you know what was handle, crazy to me? I, I couldn't handle anything. Like my, one of my best friends from high school, from Costa Rica, fl- he was like, yo, I'm going to be in Paris, like the same day you're there in Spain. We didn't even plan this. But he's like one of the most good vibes, buff, like has money, free. And he's like, fuck yeah, dude, we need to take one big trip a year at least. So we made a promise that we'd take one big trip a year. And we went to Spain last year. So this year. Uh, we're thinking of Argentina or some other like fun country, dude. And he's so much fun to travel with, which I feel like that changed. I mean, he's so down for everything. It was so much fun, but I'm saying this because I'm laughing and fucking like in, in Spain. And I'm like, this motherfucker's not answer me. It was easier for one of my high school friends from Costa Rica to meet me in Europe than it was you right next door, basically. It's easy to take an hour train. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Hour so, train. so, so, what was the exact? Do you remember? Can you possibly remember the the date? Not the exact date, yeah. but like around what time in October? Um, wait, you probably saw on Instagram that you were in London, so he messaged. Yeah, okay, it was for sure London. Never mind. Never hey, mind. I'm in London as well. Never mind. I was just wanted to make sure it was London. Hey, I'm, it, I'm across okay. the street from you. Do you want to hang like, out? It's not across the street. Spain is still like a three hour train ride, right? Dude, Which is, I, that's okay. That's pretty close. Kind of no, that's pretty, ass, like, no, that's yeah, pretty close. That's still close. Now, now Dude, in London, w- in London, bro, I was losing my mind for two weeks straight. I spent two weeks. Well, in wouldn't London. you want a friend next to you? Is this happening? Um. Well, the thing is, I need. I, I every day was work. Every day was straight pure work, kinda. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no. Like, but the reason. The reason. Kinda, no. But I the love reason. Adding that to anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, like but the reason. In no, no, no. Me, I kinda, no, but the reason. <laughs> the reason I say kinda is because, <laughs> bro, it was a weird um, case study. But but for some reason, okay, in Amsterdam, my film goes to shit. I lose thirty k, and as soon as I lose thirty k, that that I know I'm in thirty thirty thousand dollars in debt like this, my whole world goes dark. Mm. Like like it's like, the most amount of of pain I felt. Because I knew I just, in one second, I went in this huge ditch and I'm now looking up, seeing the dirt wall I have to climb up. And then the London gig, thank God I got that London gig. But the company that flew me out to London, they paid me almost the exact amount of money that I lost in Amsterdam. But when I went there, for some reason, well, I was looking forward to that gig the whole year. Keep that in mind. Yeah. They wanted me to to, to direct a 100k budget project and i was like hell yeah i was looking forward to that gig and when it finally came turns out i have to work for free because i'm just using that money just to pay for my loss Damn. so the whole time i was there i had this weird thing called somatic anxiety basically somatic anxiety is like when your ex- your mental anxiety is manifested through your physical nerves mm. so you're shaking you have nausea you have fatigue and i was like that for two weeks straight and since i had that this is getting a little dark, but since I had that, uh, I completely, um, I completely like flanked on the project that I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I still got the job done, but I did a terrible job. And then I feel like I ruined my relationship with that company, mm. but that added on to the stress. But basically just to paint a picture, whew, man, those two weeks, that's why Damn. I didn't. That's why I didn't answer because I was but like, "How did you do a terrible job? Were you directing something?" No, so I didn't end up directing it. Last minute, they wanted me to just write it and host it, which means like I'm the main actor in the video, and um, and 
yeah so i still wrote the project and and uh was a host but i was pretty difficult to work with i feel like and oh, no I, I i can tell yeah i mean I, I i didn't do the best job and i would understand if they don't want to work with me again and i've worked with that company so many times so yeah kind of ruined my relationship with them is when that they your were always one or, of the or it's get, my perception maybe i'm overthinking it but yeah because i i but, also think uh if well, you're coming off of a big gig well go ahead and finish your thought i guess okay i'll finish it real quick yeah yeah I was only supposed to be in London for four days, but I had to extend it to two weeks because I did, wasn't getting the job done. So that's another thing. Why weren't you getting the job? I don't understand. Like, well, the anxiety for some reason, like, dude, the fatigue was the most fatigue I've ever felt. I don't know how to explain it. I think, I guess my Lost in London video is the closest I got to explaining it, the sickness or whatever, but I don't know. I couldn't, I just could not work. I mean, this guy could have helped you wrote it, whatever you were writing. He's for I, the writer. I mean, dude, he, no, no, I but mean, you, like what he's saying is like he wasn't even in a place where he could get help. Yeah. Yeah. I like, feel like, all, like even all if all I went there lost. and I tried to help him like write or whatever, like there's no way like mentally you're, yeah, you were just checked out and your body was fucking manifesting that. Yeah. Cause I mean like to get that level of anxiety, um, uh, Fuck yeah! I mean, you're. It's it's probably like the Amsterdam thing was the last straw, and it kind of broke like this bigger shit and started hitting you. I think here's what happened, dude. Steezy always thought he was that guy, and the Amsterdam thing told him, "Hey, dude, you're not that guy. You're yeah. not even close to being that guy." Yeah. And it broke his whole reality, whose whole world, who he was. He's like, "Oh, dude, I'm a nobody, and I have years left to do anything." And he didn't know how to handle that. Damn. That's what happened. That's what I've been telling him. I asked him I mean, told him that. Yeah, no, I mean, I said that in my video too, in the Lost in London video. Basically, the film becoming a disaster, um, I forget how I said it. It like tore up my identity. It's bigger than ego. What, what, what owns ego is identity. And that tore up my identity of who I knew I was. You legitimately so, were in a crisis. It's like this. It's like, dude, you're, it's like you always think you're funny. You always think like you're the funniest guy in the world. You go to a stand up and everybody boos you. Yes. And you're like, fuck, dude. Then who the fuck am I? I always thought I was funny and I went up there. I thought I was ready and everybody booed the fuck out of me. And so what do you do with that? Because I think like that's the next piece of the puzzle where like, does that break you or make you try harder? Yeah, yeah. And I, mean, I think that's the other side of where. I mean, Spielberg's first movies were not good. Nobody's first movies were good. Correct. No and ones. To, to watch them, like, and all that negative shit, I imagine, like, they'd be... Because you get shit feedback. It's like, hey, that wasn't the best. Like, of course it can't be good. It's like your first time fucking. Like... Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's well, a little bit different. No, no, no. I mean, like, you should improve, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And relax. By the way, I... I what did you I, think he meant yeah, by yeah, that? Yeah, hold on. He said first time. No, he said it was bad. I mean... you Because it sounds like you're saying the I first time it. you I ever said, had I sex. Just you got, it. I'm just saying it. I thought that's what I'm you were a natural. saying. No, that is, that is what he, no, that is what he's saying. I am a natural. He's basically that. saying no, know, that his I'm, first I'm, time was perfect. I'm saying I'm no, a no, natural. I'm repeating it to him I'm so he hears himself out loud being sounding fucking ridiculous. Listen, anyways, it doesn't matter. Um... Dude, my first time felt like her last. That's what she said. Yeah, because she was going to kill herself probably. <laughs> but <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, let's go back to uh, real stuff. Where were we? We were in... Oh, yeah. The, what do you do with the uh, fucking... Um, what do you do whenever they say no? Like... What do you mean no? Who said yeah, no? Yeah, what do you mean no? Who said no? Uh, well, when they reject you. Who? Well, I'm talking about the fucking example with Spielberg and all that. What the fuck? No, well, for your you example, for the, for, like the, a, well, for, the purpose, for the purpose of your example, who's yeah, saying no? Uh, like the audience is rejecting your work. Okay. Because you're getting, he's getting an identity crisis just because he no, went there. No, but he didn't make any work. No, no, he thought, um, he thought he was that guy. Like the universe is telling him no. no okay, okay, the universe is saying no. Yeah, but no. The, he didn't make that work, so it wasn't well, well, even the okay, universe's okay. fault. It was all well, Steezy's fault. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Well, no, no, that's not what I mean. Anyways, go ahead. Let's say, what do you do when your work goes to shit? Yeah, when, when the when when the work is 
Or you um, can't perform because you didn't even perform. Well, I mean, I well, feel but like your identity well, also. I, go ahead. I mean, honestly, I think I could have done a better job because most of it was just fear and loathing. I'm just gonna say it, fear Vegas. and loathing. It was fear and loathing for what does sure. Loathing mean. Loathing means disgust. Okay. Um, but I mean, I think I did a pretty good job in turning around the Amsterdam Project last second into a, an experimental film on failure. Um, because yeah, I mean, I love how it turned out. Um, Atlas loved how it turned out. Um, Dan, the CEO, thankfully, he loved how it turned out. Um, and at first, I mean, I had a meeting with Dan, and I was just telling him in the meeting, I showed him the footage before it was edited and i was just telling him like i can't make anything of this what i want to do is just pay you back the full amount of money and you know my goal in this yeah. meeting yeah. my goal why are you laughing <laughs> i just thought something funny keep going you put the mic to your mouth i just thought of something funny keep going okay well i was in the meeting with him and i was just telling <laughs> him is he laughing? <laughs> okay well i was in the meeting with him and i was just telling him hey my goal for this meeting is just to to, to wipe our hands clean and get closure. I just want to show you this footage, show you why it won't work, and pay you back the money. But then he told me what he saw in the footage. He gave me advice on how to edit it. Honestly, his advice on the film is what made me able to finish it. And then I gave it one more month of editing, which is not what I wanted to do. I told him I wanted closure in this meeting. But I was like, you know what? I'll take his advice, spend one more month editing, and... <sighs> Finally, I, I I like how the film turned out. I love it actually. So, that's good. Still lost a lot of money, but I mean, hey. I feel that comes with the game, dude. That like every big director has almost gone fucking broke in one of their movies. Everyone, like that. I was I was reading the story of. I mean, dude, George Lucas took a huge risk taking on Star Wars because he kind of produced everything, and he fucking cut the deal. Hey, don't pay me anything which is even dumb, but he, this is how much he believed in his project. He was like, just give me the toy sales. And that ended up being, the merchandise ended up being like the biggest part of Star Wars. I mean, Damn, he became he's a, a genius. He became he's a billionaire a because of that. And I always thought, think about that because it seems so obvious in retrospect. Isn't, like, it, worth like, isn't it worth like 60 billion Star Wars? Uh, he sold it to Disney for 7 billion and now it's worth like over 55 million. Yeah. Billion, buddy. billion rather. Yeah, Do you yeah. know when he became a billion off of that? Or oh, rough like estimates. Twelve years ago. Pretty soon, bro. Yeah, like and, and when when viral. when did he make Star Wars? Nin 90s? In the nineties, nineties. I forget the first one. It had to be in like ninety five or something. I mean, dude, Star Wars took over in a way where like I don't think anything has taken over to that extent. I guess maybe Marvel stuff. Nah, you have because all, it's these little kids. Yes, but the thing is, with dude with with Star Wars, it created subcultures and it created a religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there's Jediism. It's an official religion like in the world. So you can say you're a Jedi from the fucking movie. It's, it's a registered religion. It's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a lot of Marvel, Marvel people. But like that's also they're grabbing inspiration from Greek mythology, Thor and all this other shit. Star Wars was like that was its own world. So... Uh, yeah, I guess my point with the story was like, in, in retrospect, everything seems obvious. Oh, yeah, of course, Star Wars would work, Hero's Journey, you know, I got all the toys, the kids are going to love it, but like, it's it never is. Um, well, I don't know if this is your Star Wars, but uh, you had... I mean, I'm thinking I should have sold products. No, I mean... No. Of what? Products of what? No. Yeah, no, that, it, was a it was a dumb joke. Gotcha. Dumb joke. Uh, well, it's, uh, Phil set you up for a dumb joke, so it's not really your fault. It's Phil's fault for. Yeah. Uh, for no, setting you up no, like it's that. not. That's. <laughs> uh, anyways, dude, the thing, the whole Doesn't reason was was the whole reason is like, hey, dude, you can always earn more money later on, but to oh, have we're this going back to trip, to yeah, yeah, to have this trip available where all three of us are free, available. <laughs> and what's wrong with your V's? <laughs> what's wrong with? What? Dude, don't oh, worry it's, about oh, so it's, it. So it's, so it's not just. So it's not just vlogs. <laughs> Damn, no, that's like, strange. No. Is that strange? Dude? No, that's actually strange. very strange. <laughs> hey, girl, let me see that vagina. <laughs> oh fuck, Jesus! Oh. That's hilarious. Right, okay, continue. anyways, uh, what I'm telling you is like, hey, dude, you, you can always pay the money back, or you, we do. We can always earn ten thousand dollars on a brand deal, but you cannot get back 
those two weeks that were available for you to go on a trip to your friends. Dude, in your deathbed, you're not going to say, thank God I saved those $1,000. You're not going to yeah. say that. You're, well, you're going to say, fuck, dude, I should have gone on that trip to Costa Rica yeah. for two weeks with those guys. Yeah, I mean, what I was going to say was my, like... My neighbor's uh, home. What's that? My neighbor's home. Fuck oh, yeah. that bitch. Uh, the, what I was going to say was like the... But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. My... I'm trying to tie it back because we. I'm noticing. Yes, yeah, so you're like saying your friend from Costa Rica flew rather than Steezy yeah, yeah, drives three hours. Spain, so the same thing, dude. People from other places are gonna go meet us in Costa Rica rather than Steezy, which we're saying he can pay us later and he can just go and it's free. There's no projects holding him back. Dude. There's no real projects where he's shooting a film or anything that's realistic. The only thing holding him back is fear itself. Damn, that's straight up the truth. Dude. Can it's I get all, an amen? It's fear itself, dude. There's nothing else. Dude. It's fear itself. Instead of saying, you know what, I told him, the universe gives you weighs out in ideas for future but he's fighting the universe and if you're fighting the universe dude you cannot win yeah dude he's basically saying this this is what you know we're saying hey dude go on the trip with these guys but steve's saying no i want to live it my way and i have to stay here in this apartment till i fix my life and that's never gonna work never dude you cannot fight the universe so of saying you know what let me go to costa rica see what happens uh, I think yeah, I'm gonna pick it back off of that. I just want to tie the Spain thing, and I think what you're saying may, it makes lost a lot in of Spain, sense. But go for it. No, no, I'm just saying because I'm 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 active listening, and I'm realizing with the audience, right? They're gonna appreciate this. Like, leave a comment if you appreciate this, because I know like what the fu- you're thinking. What the fuck? Leave a comment if you don't thing? appreciate it as well. <laughs> uh, but my brother told me something similar. Uh, when I when I was deciding to go to Spain, because I said it was like twenty five hundred, and then he went crazy with all the fucking Vegas story. Um, he was like, "Hey, you're never gonna regret saying I went to Spain." Damn. And like he was like, "That's something uh, I can picture you like being on your deathbed." Wait, why would you never regret going to Spain? Why would you? Oh, no, right. actually, okay, you're right. Because okay, I was thinking right after, but you said deathbed, and you're right. Yeah, like because even on my deathbed, I wouldn't regret the Amsterdam stuff. There you go. So when now, that, now you're vibing. So when that Damn, happened, that makes that was, sense. That was a that was the night where I was like, "He's right." I pulled out the credit card, I booked the the trip and everything. I mean, I regret not going. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I texted the group because I texted dude, him that's and so true. I, I texted him with and Phil. Marie. I think I texted everybody. I might have texted you, Steezy. Yeah, but he was crying in London. Because because when people ask the elderly on their deathbed, what do you regret in life? They never say the things that they did. They say the things that they, they didn't. didn't do. Yeah. And he Whereas, not, so why are you acting like Phil brought that up? I literally brought that exact No, but same Phil said thing. it better. Phil said it in a way that made it clear. I'm a teacher. But the point I'm trying to make with that Deathbed story, was the key word. All right, all right, Professor Phil, keep going. Uh... Not only do old people mention the things not doing, none of them ever relate to losing or making money. Like who? Wait, who never relates? To old them? people. They never say thank God I saved those a thousand dollars. Now what's that noise? You said. Oh, I- that's me. <laughs> Jesus, that sounded horrible. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. like what I'm saying is, um, I like it, during my trip. Like we're about to go to Costa Rica. Just to bring him back to that. And I think, yes, Steve should go. And I'll explain the reasons here in a second. I think a lot about my grandma because she passed away. She died like two years ago. Damn. Every time I go back to Costa Rica, I think of her for obvious reasons. I mean, because I was born and raised there. But I remember like my mom and I talk about like our, my grandma. And we're like, this guy's fucking. Like yeah, I can't hold it. He's burping into the mic. So I'm talking about my fucking <laughs> yeah, grandma. You're like, I guess, yeah. I guess you find it disgusting. No, I just like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Does it correlate? Does it correlate? Well, my extremely dead grandmother, who's from Costa Rica, that Cezy finds disgusting. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she loved. Um, life is kind of like the best way to explain her personality. She was just very positive. She's she loved doing things like, oh my god, we're going to the store. Yes, like celebrated the small things. And when she died, it was the first person that I was very close with growing up. Like she saw me grow up, and I saw her get older as well. To the point where I know how much like she looked up to me. Oh my god, I love you. I'm so proud of you, and all this other stuff. And as I'm going through this trip and I was like stressing out because of this work thing, I was like, I want to catch up. So when I'm there, I'm just fully present. 
I'm like, relax. Because I imagine her like looking at me and she was like, what the fuck? Like, you, who gives a fuck? Spend the extra $200 on this stupid ass car or whatever. Like if you want to rent it. If you're going to go on like this thing. And this is why the uh, I before the cameras turned on, I was saying like fear is a mile wide and an inch deep. And that quote keeps seeing in my head. Because it's like we make giants out of fucking little dwarves, dude. Where, think about this. Not only... Are we saying, hey, come, you're going to be with a local thing? Shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a, I'm a local. And I'm a local. Um, you'll never be old steezy staring off about the lights are dimming and you're like, man, thank God I saved $500 a trip to fucking Damn, Costa Rica. That's so true. Like, you want, and. Dude, I kept saying that. It just, just annoys me that no, when I said Phil, it, he Phil, never Phil, said it. Phil puts it into such a better picture <laughs> because how come that is? Like, you forget how much money you had even just a year after. I don't there remember how much money I had last uh, February. The Dude, the money the money you forget so quick. So, so quick. when you're 80 years old, you're not gonna remember how much Fuck fucking no. money Especially you had. Especially towards the end where where the light is dipping and everything. And well, I guess you will remember like the moments you slept in your car. But those the are the good moments. Were, but those are like, still good and moments. And what about the moments you were homeless? Those are still good moments. If you made it out, those are good moments. Yes, that's true. I I think when that's true. And like I said, I, I one of my friends said, like, we have a revisionist history. Like, when we think back about, like, this horrible shit that we went through, we'll only remember the better parts. Like, working in construction, it was really hard at the time, like, for the few months that I did it. But I look back and I was like, oh, thank God that happened. Like, that was actually a lot of fun. I was riding a little tractor and all this other shit. And I was like, that's crazy because while I was doing it, I remember how I felt. Did I mean I wanted to die? You know what I'm saying? Like horrible. But yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Like I, a lot of my perspective is specifically with money started to shift because I was like, um, I mean, you guys are I, entering my world. Well, I don't care about money. Well, dude, like this isn't about you. First of all, I feel you need to be given credit a lot. Check your ego. Read the ego. Because I say all these things, but no credit's ever given to me, <laughs> ever. I'm, no. dude, I'm way ahead of my time. No, okay, okay. Let me, let me. all these things. Let me, let me give Alejandro his flowers. Oh, thank God. Today, <laughs> at today, <laughs> thank God. He was like, Jesus, finally someone. Uh, it's like finally someone's gonna massage me. Yeah. That's what he sees the compliment says like a mess. Look, he's laying down like dude, I'm just saying, dude, I've been on okay, this for okay, years. Okay, today at Joanne's, we went to Joanne's cafe, which is a great cafe. I can't believe I've never been there. It's on Congress. Is it Joe's um, or Joanne's? Joanne's. Oh, okay. Uh but he yeah, he was telling me the whole like why I should go and all of that and it was making sense. It was making sense. Well, that was not the best way to give flowers. <laughs> but uh, he I gave tried. me nothing. He gave I me tried. fucking stamps. I tried. He gave me stamps. I tried. Dude, he gave me the bare minute. He gave me crumbs. Tried. He was like, he gave me fucking You're seeds. You were kind of making sense. <laughs> like, you some... literally just said, you kind of here's put what said. a coherent here's what said. thought together, I guess. I was like, I here's tried. some seeds. I'm like, I what? Tried He's like, give... they'll turn into flowers I, later. I, 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 <laughs> and fertilizer you plant this bitch and figure it out <laughs> there'll Holy be flowers shit. in five months <laughs> that's yeah i mean i tried but i <laughs> just i'm just so tired that was it's crazy just, to hear it's just been a long Bro. day <laughs> i mean um well, hold on finish was there any flowers no, in no, there no, there's no that flowers was it left. move on no he just said the restaurant was yeah, good move on, he gave joanne's the flowers that was it he said best restaurant you should check it out <laughs> dude he gave he complimented the restaurant before you what did. what were you saying you said something about we were there okay okay let me try again um <laughs> that yeah, was crazy. I mean, you he said amazing restaurant okay and okay 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 okay. Made sense. okay what you said was <laughs> what you said was was that the, oh the universe you said that the <laughs> your own even your own girl no, no, no. you said that the universe the universe is telling you how your life should play out and you wanting to stay here is you telling the universe instead how you want it to plan plan out like oh i need to fix my life here now i mean i know you just said that here too but that's what you said in the restaurant and it was one of those moments where like i'm putting the taco in my mouth but you're saying it and i pause and i look up and I slowly put the taco back down and I slowly nod. And I look at you and I'm like, that makes sense. There we go. Is that better? A little bit. A little bit better. Yeah. A little bit better. Well, I'm glad you were making sense. Well, no, I told I, 
I told this to Phil also. I told this to Phil also. The thing is, dude, I'm a, I'm a fountain of wisdom. I'm a fountain of wisdom. And, a, and, and, but you guys, but you guys don't want to drink from me. Oh, drink from me that's sometimes. Okay, dude. What do you mean, dude? I'm open for y'all to drink from me. Yeah, that's you anytime. Gotta, you gotta phrase that better. I'm wide open for a drink from both of y'all, and because I'm a fountain of wisdom. Me and Phil were eating at Kirby Lane Cafe, right? Shout and out I, Kirby Lane. And I told them, very amazing restaurant. And I told them, uh, we're eating, right? I told, we're eating. And uh, I think uh, one of the things was like, what were we talking about? Anyways, we're talking about how, we're talking about life, right? We're talking about life <laughs> and how he's very busy, right? He's saying he, he's very busy and everything. He's very busy doing big things. And I told him, hey, dude, by the way, what's happening here? Because I told him, I don't live life like that. I live life. That every moment I enjoy. Because he's planning things for the future. I told him that you're, the future won't be any different than it is now. You think it will be, but it won't be any different. And here's why. I told him here's why. Imagine 10 years ago when you were eating at home, you would think, I wish I had the money to eat out at restaurants. That's what you would think. I wish I had money to eat out at restaurants. Now we have the money to eat out at restaurants. And for some reason... It doesn't feel any better than when you were at home. It feels the same. Even though back then you were poor, now dude, he has money to eat out anytime he wants. We spent 60 bucks at the meal, right? 60 bucks in the meal. I told him, hey dude, here's what's going to happen when we're all making 100000 With the same way you call me, hey, meet me at Kirby Lane Cafe, it's going to be, hey dude, meet me at Paris tomorrow. We'll go eat at this restaurant. And we go to Paris and then we spent six hundred dollars on the meal, but the mindset and everything's gonna be the same. Just a higher up restaurant, a different location, dude. But his mindset won't change. It's gonna be like, oh, dude, I gotta sign ten more clients and have this meeting and all this. I told him it's gonna be the same shit. You're always gonna be busy. You're always gonna be, have all these things, and the the restaurant the restaurant's just changing. The vehicle is just changing, but inside it will always be the same. Until you stop thinking about the future, until you stop thinking about things, you're like, this is it, this is life. Let me enjoy this because this is what it is. So even though we're making millions of dollars, dude, it's gonna be the same thing. Hey, CC, it's gonna be the example. Hey, CC, let's go to Hawaii for a month. You're gonna say, oh, dude, I can't, I gotta do this film over here, blah, blah, blah. And five years from now, hey, CC, let's do this. Oh, dude, I can't, blah, blah. So, dude, what I tell people, there will never be a perfect moment when you're like, Oh, dude, I can and I will. It's a mindset to can and will. It's the mind. It's not the money. It's not the location. It's the mind. Dude. Because if we were all poor, it would be like, hey, dude, let's go to 6th Street next weekend. We'll get a hotel. And people are not in your money. So they have to chip in to come up with $200. And someone would be like, oh, no, dude, you know, I'd rather stay home, blah, blah, blah. But to them, getting a hotel on 6th Street was such a big deal. So the person who was always down for that, oh, yeah, dude, let's get a hotel. That person's going to be the same when he goes up in money. Hey, dude, let's go to fucking now California. And yeah, we up yeah. in money. Hey, let's go to Brazil and party. Well, so it, that person, dude, no matter where they're at, they're always going to enjoy their limitations to the extreme. Does that make sense? And if you don't become that person, you're always going to feel bored, tired, no matter how much money you earn, no matter where you're at in life, because it's the mindset. It's not the location. It's not the situation. It's a mindset. The way you're feeling now, dude, won't improve even if you start getting TV shows. It will not improve, dude. You're going to be the same CZ, acting the same way, feeling the same stress, everything, if you, even if you get these TV shows. It's only going to change once you change your mindset, dude, because right now, dude, time's good. Time is amazing. How do you change your mindset? Baby stepping slowly. It's all big. The same thing that I told him. Now I block girls and all this because, dude, that's the only way to truly become, hey, I don't take bullshit from people. I told him it's baby stepping. I lo okay, so let me interject because you're saying Sims. a lot of I fucking threw some fucking fire out. No, there. Yeah, I mean that was good. That was a fucking that good was, model. Was, I was geez. letting you. I was letting you like pour all that out. Yeah, that that was that was really good. Dude, on my tombstone, while you were saying that, I was just thinking of like I don't know people. Fountain of wisdom. Editing dude. that. Put that in like my tombstone. That. Fountain of wisdom lies here. Give them flowers. Fountain of wisdom and come. Jeez. I'm gonna hire people to not on your grave. So go go. What you're saying. The I'm glad how we brought it back down. Uh, to the worst level just to bring it back up again <laughs> but uh you're hitting on two points that i've been thinking about a lot which is 
the first thing is how you do one thing is how you do everything. If you are the type of person to say you're going to be there by 630, even if it's a friend's type of thing and just chilling out, you get there by 630. Because if you if you don't do that, then you're the type of person to take a meeting and be okay with things slipping just a little bit, you know, because you're just starts making like excuses in your head. So I just want you guys to take that in because that there's it? a lot of that here. No, no, no. The other, the other, the other one was, uh, the, was how it. you do one, uh, one thing is how you do everything. And you're also talking about um, external things don't fix the internal. I mean, like how you're feeling right now is exactly how you're going to feel when you're making movies and all this other shit, which I 100% agree with. I feel like... Uh, I mean, which by the way... That's I a put sad you, realization, but it's also like... An instruction manual. Yeah. By the way, I put you onto this. I was already on this mindset. That, that, what, and you guys, was, what you guys are talking about reminds me of the quote from um, No Country for Old Men, where the guy is like, you know, I always this, thought... Oh, never mind. Which one were you going to say? I want you to say yours, okay. but I, 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 I if always, we're talking about the same one, I always our thought, saying, as a kid, when I get older, that God would somehow walk into my life. He never did. And it just ends like what that. Do, what does that mean? Like he thought that as he aged, he would get wiser. Think of the age as money or success that he thought God would suddenly enter into his life. Like his life would become easy, but his life was always the same. So yeah. he was like always looking forward to something, but like it never came. It's basically what you're saying. No matter okay. how much money you get, no matter how much you move up into the, um, in society, you're going to act the same that you do right now. Okay, I was gonna say another uh, line, but that one is so fucking fire. I completely forgot about that line. I mean, that's the last line in the film. Well, I don't know if it's the last line, but it's the last scene. There's a um, there's a scene where he is in the hotel, the bad guy, and he's about to kill this guy, the cowboy, you know, with the hat, who's chasing after him for the money, mm -hmm. and he's all nervous. And the bad guy is like, he won an Oscar for that, Antonio Bardem, uh, Javier Bardem. Uh, Damn, your brain is like IMDb. The other guy was Woody, by the way. Yeah, Woody Harrelson. But I mean, they're not gonna know. Good Come job, on. Alejandro. Here's your token. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said cowboy, but I actually got the name. Um, so he's sitting there, and the cowboy is basically like uh, arguing, like bargaining him for his life. Hey, you know, let me live. I got 14k in the ATM. I can give it to you. I'll, I'll never see you. And the bad guy just looks at him, and he's like. If all your choices led to this moment, then what good were your choices? And like, he was Is basically... Is that a quote? No, I Doesn't fucked that up right. at the end and I'm upset. But I think you're saying, hey, dude, you were meant to die. Yeah, yeah. if all your choices led you to this, then of what... Oh, what's fuck. good to no, let no, you no, live? No, no. Hold on, hold on. What's good to let you live if you're going to end up here again? Yes. No, no, but the quote is this. Okay. Sorry, guys. I fucked it up, but look it up on YouTube. It's great. He's like, if the rule you followed led you to this moment of what good of of what good use was that rule what rule like the rules you have i remember that line i don't think that's right but, but we get the point yeah yeah basically I think you got closer the first time it's basically hey dude there's no point in letting no, you no, no, live but the first line is the actual one in the movie or the second one that i said that like if the rule led you to this moment uh, of, what good, yeah, what, yeah. of what use was the rule or he was yeah essentially it's we're it's the same thing where uh, yeah, or your choices led you to that moment. Yeah. So, I've, like... What's the point of letting you live? Because you're going to make the same choices again. Correct. So, I'm just cutting your life earlier. Correct. And he was basically saying, like, whether you die now or later, it doesn't matter. Like, life's just so ahead of that you're dying right now. Uh, mm, yeah, that was it. That was it. It's, it's Damn, sort of... that's a depressing... Yeah, but thought. it's also, like, good to know because I think... I'm so much, we're so much on the cautionary side of things. Like I think as people and most normal people as well, uh, entrepreneurs tend to be like a little bit riskier. And I was talking about this as well, where like, if you ask people how to live your life, you're fucked because now you're waiting for something external to validate the internal. And then all of a sudden they're going to tell you, well, do you buy a house, you know, get kids or whatever, or even the opposite end is also, I think bad if it's not you, like, uh, you know, never get a wife, you know, go fuck around, like uh, being, you know, a degenerate. That could, 
I think any extreme is bad, but I guess the point of, of that is like, you have to find like this intrinsic motivation for like, why you're making the choices you're making. And you're saying be present, basically go with the flow, be present, uh, be open to new things coming in so you can kind of learn from them. Kind of what I'm saying is smart monkey, by the way, wise wh- monkey. What I'm saying is like, Hey you guys, say that. him, why <laughs> him? <laughs> that makes it even worse that you ask that question. Anyway, okay, him a monkey. Um, have you said but that? But he's not black. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I was thinking. I was like, no, I mean, I think that's fine. Yeah. You're untouchable. He's, why was it? Mastizia also looks like a monkey. He's he's wasn't touchable. touchable. What? You know what all this talk reminds me of? Why you can't say Steezy looks like a monkey? That's racist. You know know what all this talk reminds me of? What's that movie called? Um, Train Spotting? Oh, that movie. Are you actually talking about the movie? Oh, the Andre, I think great. that would be your favorite movie. I look like a caveman. I think your favorite movie would be Train Spotting. Yeah, I look like a caveman. Huh? Train Spotting? Th- yeah, I think your favorite movie would be Train Spotting. I'll check it out. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, he's saying it's going to be my so It's basically <laughs> like. It's away from you. <laughs> well, yeah. But, anyways, from what I said, what what steps are you going to. Like, does that hit y'all? Like, are you going to Costa Rica or are you still like, nah? Um, I mean. Because if it really hits you, no, then no, the no, answer is like, yes. It did hit me, but like then then no, it didn't. Just, it didn't hit you, dude. I feel like I have to do some uh, financial no, analyzing dude, you first. Got, hold on, dude. like no, dude, like got, calculate how much is going in, how much is coming no, out dude, of my account. So you're, so you're already lost. You already lost. You all. What I'm trying to do, just by doing that, you lost the whole point. The whole point. You already lost it. Just by like I have to check my account, dude. Because dude, checking your account will always happen, <laughs> no matter what you do, no matter what you do. Hey, I got to check my account. Dude, this would be a great clip, by the way. This is hilarious because I can imagine somebody sending this to their friend who's trying to convince them to make a poor financial decision. Like, yeah, dude, fuck, fuck your bank account. Dude, no, because watch, because, no, no, watch this, watch this, watch this. No, no, but what it's saying is it's hilarious. Like, you're inspiring people to be that friend and all of a sudden that friend loses his life savings or some shit. But anyways. No, dude, but life savings <laughs> come and go. Life no. savings come and go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, just well, for how the future is looking. Like, no, no, dude, you could die tomorrow. Don't stop thinking about the future, dude. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to let go. The future does not exist. Does he know the future does not exist? Is he aware of that? No. Look the at future his is fake. No, dude. The future Obviously. is not real. It's fake. It does not exist. You're worrying for something that doesn't exist. That's what's going on right now. You're living your life for something that doesn't exist. Here's what exists. Dude, this is some riz, by the way. No, no, no. This no, dude. Girl? Here's what exists. Dude. Tomorrow you'll be no, in Costa Rica. Is. That's real. Right now you can buy tickets to be in Costa Rica. That's real. Dude, it's like, dude you used to have $100,000 in the bank. Now you have zero. Money comes and goes. So, dude, even if you do everything right in life, <laughs> even if you don't go on this trip, even if you do all this, dude, you're going to end up to a point where another project fails, another film that you had, and you lost all your millions of dollars, and you're back at square zero. So, dude, that mentality of like, oh, I need to have the right amount of money to do this trip. What, what Airbnb do you guys have? We got it, dude. Don't worry about it. Oh, that's the also thing, dude. Don't be afraid to use your resources. Hey, dude, if you guys tell me, hey, dude, uh, we already booked the Airbnbs. Then you can pay us back the money. I'll be like, okay, let's do it. I'll just pay y'all back. That's it. I'm gonna be up. I'm gonna be up sometime. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be up. No, hold up. By There's the way, there's nothing wrong with being up. Sometime. I'm not even kidding. Uh, just for editing notes and or whoever, grab this clip of that speech Alejandro gave and put some classical inspirational music. I swear to God, that is some of the funniest shit in the world. Dude, the thing is, dude, I'm a comedy genius. So, I'm a comedy and, genius. I, and I told him, dude, even though I went to the Vegas trip, dude, it hasn't died Vegas. down to be spontaneous. Vegas. It hasn't died to be spontaneous. Damn, how do we never notice that it's every V? Yeah, I know. Because it, it doesn't matter. That's why, dude. That's why you never notice it doesn't fucking matter. It matters a lot. But anyways, it, even... even it, well, what happened mind. at Vegas... No, no, I lost five thousand five grand, but I told him, dude, I am proud of that because that changed me as a man. Yeah, that yeah. That trip, that, dude, that's $5,000 worth a great investment because I'm a changed man. <laughs> it changed me. And I told him, I actually don't know why, but it really, dude, I lost all the pro anxiety. I see the world differently. And I don't know what happened. So same reason we were trying to go out Saturday. Phil was like not feeling it. The thing I told him, like, hey, dude. If we couldn't go out fucking Saturday in the city that we live on. He didn't convince me, by the way. I know, I know. But you know what I mean? It's 10 minutes away. When are we going to fucking live, dude? But I mean, look. Okay. It's the weekend, Saturday, well, five minutes away. Do you know how many people I'm wish trying, they lived in Austin? Well, I'm trying to think of like how. 
No, dude, don't going think. Going to you lost. But you have to. Think. No, you lost. You no, you have lost. To it. No, think. like you have to survive. <laughs> no, in you this lost. World. No, no, you don't. You lost. Don't think. If you think you already lost, exactly. Here's what. Here's what. Here's your mentality. I want to have fun with my friends. The money's gonna come somehow, and they got me until I get get my money through my business. So, dude, if you don't believe you're gonna be a good YouTuber, then don't come. Don't come because you're never gonna pay us back. But if you believe that you're going to be making money in the future, then this is a no-brainer. If you believe you're going to be a millionaire in the future, it's a no-brainer to come. If you think you're going to be a failure, then don't come because you'll never be able to pay us back and you're going to end up broke. That's the mentality that I have. I'm like, dude, I know I'm going to be a millionaire in the future and I can pay these guys back. So this is a no-brainer to go. Because in the future, when I make a million dollars, I'm like, thank God I went on that trip, dude. This chump change. Fucking chump is like one buck to me now. But I'm never going to get that time and that moment with my friends ever again. That's true. I can earn $10 million, but I'm never going to get being in my 20s, being broke, which is also fun, dude. Doing trips broke is funner than having all the money in the world. Your voice is a little loud. Dude, don't worry about your neighbor, dude. See, this is what I'm dude, saying, dude. This man t- He's paying $1,800 and he's talking to his All right, what apartment. if I come for a week? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's a happy medium. I mean, it's up to you. The thing is, this is the other side of Alejandro's coin. I, I, I decided never to wait for anyone to do stuff. That's no, no, I, no, we're going, but I'm saying he should No, no, come. no, I know. But what I'm saying is, like, that's why I went to Spain alone. And I was like, fuck everyone. From now on, if I want an experience, I'll just create it for myself. So whether you go or not, I would like you to come. That'd be fucking awesome. But if you don't go, my life isn't affected. You're the one who loses. It's kind of like whenever people don't realize that. It's like, dude, it's not that we gain anything. You're the only one who who gains stuff and loses stuff. Like, you're the only one robbing yourself out of this experience. I'm not. I'm fucking going having a good time. Well, I'm going too. And And I'll pay Phil back later somehow. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus Christ. All right. Let me (laughs) check something real quick. But the thing is also like uh, any type of new experience will always have resistance. It's impossible to do anything that is like all the lights are green. The, yeah. Anything worth remembering, I suppose. Well, it's very rare that a situation where all the lights are green. Yeah. That do you? Yeah. And I mean, if anybody listen to this, any people, go do that thing that you wanted to do. Don't wait. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, no, yeah, go on the trip to another country. Go on a trip to another city. Yeah. If you're 14 years old, go to the movies. If you want to go to the movies, throw that little party. At your parents' house, like, they don't allow you to throw away. Should I throw a party? Fuck it, dude. Do whatever you need. <laughs> because, dude, I wish. I do. When you get older, do you realize that the trouble you think you were going to get into is yeah. no trouble? I mean, definitely don't do drugs and alcohol. Uh, don't do drugs. Don't do anything <laughs> illegal. No, no, don't do anything illegal because that actually gets yeah, you in yeah. real trouble. And I don't fuck with real trouble. But definitely go out and don't worry about, you know, the money or, or all that stuff. What if I come until Wednesday, the 21st? Dude, you're a lost cause. Dude, what are you fighting, bro? What, that's six <laughs> days? Dude, what's, what? Anyways, okay, yeah, fine. What I'm yeah, saying, dude, is like, well, dude, hold on, hold you on. gain nothing. We gotta finish, we gotta finish points here. But yes, take the risk to this thing. Take the risk, is, Steezy. Is, is there a... What's the reason? Ask him what's the reason. That's well, what I'm saying. Yeah, I was about to ask you. It's like, is there anything... Is there, here's uh, what we do, because I was listening to this podcast, and that's why I told you guys, like, fear is a mile wide and an inch deep. In the podcast, he's talking about, like, how people catastrophize their decisions. If I do this, I have to do it forever, and I'll fucking end up homeless, and then I'll die. When in reality, let's say you were to make a bet on the uh, product for your company, you grab 5000 from your savings, you pour it, you eat shit, you lost all that money, and it's like... Worst case scenario, well, fuck, I would have to close a company or fire some employees, some shit like that, or quit, get a job. Even worst case scenario from that, oh, I guess I got to sleep on someone's sofa, like a couch. Like, I'm sure you have parents, friends, anyone, like coworkers maybe that you worked with before. Like, the worst case scenario, we build it up so extreme in our heads. I was like, oh my God, well, if I do this, oh, what happens? Oh yeah, we build the worst case scenario, but not the best case scenario. We never build up the best case scenario. And, and I guess that was... Or the s- middle case scenario. <laughs> or, or the middle... Or the middle case, case or the middle <laughs> case scenario. Uh, which, by the way, that's that's what you do in pitches. Like Uber, 
uh, the like worst case scenario, middle worst case scenario, like realistic. They call it the, the realistic scenario and then best case scenario. Um, so it's a good little pivot over here. Uber pitching to what? To VCs when they started. Oh, like that's okay. how they got funding. Venture capitalists. The exactly. most unknown job in the world. I know. Basically, I have money. I believe in this. But the whole uh, yeah, mindset behind... I've been having a lot of aha moments, but specifically, I'm like, dude, uh -huh. my, I don't know, when you think about like, um, people dying, death, everything ending and all this, I was like, holy fuck. I, I looked, I imagined my fucking grandmother looking down at me and me getting old and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like there, there is a point where you're like, uh, but it applies to both sides. Cause like you said, if, once you do something small, that's how you do probably most things. So it's like, if you are going to work, that means fucking work. But that also means, I was like, what was the point of the work? For like the line from the movie, what was the use of the rule? Like, oh, my rule is never going out and all this other shit. I've, at the end, you wake up, you look around and you're like, holy shit, I'm 47. I haven't had a new experience in 20 years. My life has consisted of waking up, going, clocking in, you know, going back maybe to a wife or whatever. And maybe that's, a, that's what you wanted and that's fine. But no, like, nobody wanted that. Uh, I guess the biggest tragedy is not having new experiences because you constantly uh, were so scared of losing when we only learn when we lose or when things go bad. And those are like the most memorable experiences. Like every single entrepreneur says this, like they're like, they, I learn from more from my failures and from my successes. And it's always, it is never from the successes that you learn or very rare, extremely everyone's always talking about like i mean michael jordan like you know the reason why he won those championships because he fucking lost for so many like he wasn't always michael there's people that beat michael jordan in basketball and he lost and, and sometimes there is reasons why you can't go there's sometimes there are real reasons yeah, like yeah, if I he mean, had to be filming a project or a film i wouldn't even be fighting this i'm like oh it makes sense but yeah, when but there's I'm, no I'm, reason yeah i have to fight hard because i'm like dude you legit have no reason other than you're the fear of you thinking you're wasting money you're not working and here's another thing. I didn't want to go on the Costa Rica trip. I didn't want to go either. My co my cousin was getting married. I always want to go. <laughs> my parents were going to go and everything. And I caught myself. But I remembered this happened when I went to Spain. And this is why I was like, I'm learning from my past mistakes. I'm not going to fucking repeat it. Like, learn from your fucking mistakes. So I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to be spending money. I'm saving up for a house. Like... I don't really want to take that expense on right now. And that might be legitimate. And it is logical and reasonable. But I have $2,000 in my bank, by the way. And I'm going on this trip. Well, don't do stuff like that. And I'm $30,000 in debt, by the way. Well, From what? Credit cards. I maxed them out already. Why is it always 30000 with everybody? Because yeah, I have two I credit cards. I keep reading things online from friends. And everybody yeah, says 30000 Why is it always 30000 Because I have two credit cards and the limit is 15000 on each and they're maxed out. I'm but I believe your this podcast not, is going to blow up. I'm not asking your specific <laughs> situation, but everybody seems to always have a $30,000 in debt story. Why Whoa. is it always 30000 <laughs> I notice everybody has the same amount. There's probably data behind that where like that's the average medium. Where people say no more. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say no more, dude. That's the shit what I said. Hey, no more. That's I gotta, enough. I got to relax they, here. They cap it at 30%. No, it is interesting. Yeah, when I had that, I was like close to 30. But, but did I, Yeah, it's always 30. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's so strange. Yeah, yeah. And it happened to me twice. I had to learn the lesson twice. Damn. Which was stupid. But my point being was like... This is something I can recover from. I don't yeah. ever, I don't ever want to bet the farm, like I and I will never make as much money. But what if a loan shark comes after you? Well, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. No, no, yeah, like you never want to put all your ch uh, chips on the table. Like, take the risk that for you won't fucking break you, because that is actually a bad place to be in life. You will face darkness, and like it's, yeah, yeah, it's dumb, a mistake. Dumb you have decisions. To, you have to be very, very. I got some loan sharks after me too. Yeah, like that's when life actually fucks you up. Like, wait, if you have to quit your job to go on a trip, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, like it has to be repairable damage, but it has to be real risk as well, because you never learn within the lines. It's like you have to go to the edge so you can see new sights. And this is what's pulling from you. Unless there's a project on your calendar that you, you're time sensitive on or whatever. I do have one. Um, let's see. It is 
um, Soul Skate Playland Skate Center. It's a roller skating event. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, this Wait, guy's a comedy genius. A he's fucking with us. He's a comedy genius. Dude, <laughs> he's fucking with us. <laughs> but I really don't want to miss it. Dude, you said that so convincingly. I was <laughs> listening so attentive to every word. What the fuck? Um, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, I spent, even in Spain, dude, I spent money I didn't have. And like for a little bit and I'm fine. And You're even better, by the way. Yeah, actually, I am better. I and think that trip made you this better, by the way. Yeah, because now I, I'm not even kidding. I don't really give a fuck about the money portion now. And I'm making more money now but there's like these bad habits that i have in my head as to like being too risk averse and everything and like i said logically when you tell this to people even when you're making a business bet if i had listened to everybody in my life about making choices i would ha be nowhere close to where i am like nobody leaves costa rica like why the fuck would you leave there like even if you come here to start a business to get a safe job like i could be I mean, when I started applying for jobs, I realized like, oh shit, like I could actually get like high paying jobs, be cozy, be cruising, like have my little house and everything. And it's like, dude, but is that the story that I want to fucking tell? What kind of fucking stupid ass story is that? I don't want to be safe within the line. So I was like, I don't know. My brother saying that, that was like the universe speaking through him saying like, hey dude, you're not going to get to the end of your life and regret this trip. Uh, and it's the same thing whenever you find the love of your life. I think it's the same thing when you find a project that you're so passionate about that you have to think about every day. It's like, dude, fucking do it. Who gives a shit? Like, where's my phone, dude? I need to read you this quote just to finish this. Um, the one time he doesn't have his phone, dude. I know, he dude. Always I was the, trying to be present. The one time he actually uh, needs it. Well, he from, from it. my experience, you always lose things under the couch. Whose oh. belt is that? Mine, mine, mine. Oh my god! I put it dude, down there so people so don't step on it. I'm sure, dude. You're just not seeing it. Just relax, breathe. Just relax and breathe. Yeah, did I fucking put it? Just relax I... and breathe. Just relax. You relax for a second. You'll find it. Just relax. Oh my god! Did this motherfucker take See? it? See, you just oh. gotta relax. I didn't take it. I just saw it right here. Just gotta relax, dude. <laughs> relax and let fate take care of it. CZ, read the quote on my screensaver just so people don't think I'm making shit up. All right. I mean, I don't like the people that put quotes on their screensavers, but um, the good. quote says, you're going to die, period. And a few months later, comma, no one will think, oh, it, the phone turned off. You're going to die, period. And a few months later, no one will think about the risk you took or didn't take. What a waste to live your entire life to please people who will never think of you again, in parentheses, or ever to begin with. Point yeah, of this being I mean, like how... Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it doesn't apply to me, but I see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I don't know if it applies to CZ either. Because we're not caring, we're not doing stuff for people, unless you are doing it for people. No, no, um, like it's uh, that's not your choice whether you think you're doing it for people or not, because we are doing everything for people. Like, oh. dude, the way you dress, we want to get this following, become successful, and all this other shit. You want people to like you. Everything is for people. Well, it's like you're basically telling me the equivalent of when girls say, "I wear wake up for, uh, I wear makeup for me." That's right, what no, you're saying. But I get the result of why I do. Anyways, keep going. Keep going. I guess the 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 point I'm trying to make is everything is driven by like our desire to be liked by people, especially our career right now, everything like, and the problem is whenever there's a risk, it's always but, tied down to kind of if, like some sort of validation that you're looking for. Anyways, even though that might be a stretch, the point of the quote is like, Hey, uh, the risks that you take right now, they're so micro in this like bigger, if you lay out your life, like in 10 years, this will never break it to that point. And now if you're here in Texas, what new experience can you create for yourself? That's the other question. So you need to continually grow as a person. Can you really create resistance here enough or something to where you would expose yourself to like a new situation? Um, I mean, I've been taking a lot of uh, solo picnics in Zilker. So how many of those do you think? <laughs> he's fucking with you, by no, the way. No, I know he's fucking with me. 
but I'm in my motivation. Right? Uh, yeah, that's the worst when you're motivational and they don't take it serious. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. And you're okay, like, okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. It kills like. Okay, okay, no, okay. I mean, you have to deflect with well, humor. That's fine. Um, uh, listen, I'm saying this for you as much as I'm saying it for me because, like I said, I mean, I think another thing is that I'm just traumatized by international traveling right now because I just got my ass whooped in Amsterdam and London. Yeah, but you can live your life in fear. Maybe, you can't live your maybe life in Latin fear. America would be different. Yeah, dude, we're warm people, okay, no, maybe, hotter women. Maybe Latin America would be different. But also, dude, that that's like. Uh, even London should be different if you go back there. The exact, well, like it wasn't different. <laughs> so you're breathing very hard into the mic, by the way. Like, very hard. Okay, let me, you know. Is this a good distance? Yeah, it's just you go <laughs> <laughs> on it. <laughs> like, every time you speak, Jesus <laughs> Christ, that was what horrible, was that? dude. What was that? Wait, how did I'm you wearing do that? headphones, <laughs> and that sounded horrible. Yeah, damn, Phil's, uh, that's Phil's voice, by the way. Yes, my natural voice. But um, well, um, the okay. point I'm trying to make, dude, it, it's like it, this is not even a question. Oh, international travel fucked me up. Oh my god, he broke my heart. I'm never gonna date men again. Well, that's stupid. You saw a bad movie. You're never gonna go to the movies again. That's retarded. I mean, I agree with you. The thing is that people look at their life as like right in front of them, but they realize like, dude, expand your life in ten years. Look at yeah. all the, all the problems that are gonna come, and if you don't take any of the opportunities, it's it's like, dude. Basically, when you didn't talk to that Asian girl, right? At that moment, that was a big challenge and all this and all that. And you didn't do it. And you know what's the worst part? The worst part about making a decision is the regret that you could have done more. And I think about this shit all the fucking time where it's like, can you go to bed like saying, did he leave it all on the floor? And I know it sounds like cheesy and shit, but I'm like, this is something that I'm trying to push myself because like even in some of the projects that I'm doing, I was like, I half assed it and I hate that feeling because I was like, oh, fuck, I could have pushed for more. So. Yeah, dude, I mean, I mean, it's a mindset. The thing is, it's a mindset. And if you want to become great in the future, you have to apply the mindset that I have, you know, which is like taking risks. First of all, no, dude, because dude, it's just, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't understand, dude. How people, you tell them, hey, dude, free trip, free flights, everything's booked. Just say yes to fun. And they go, nah, man, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Because we have a friend, dude, that I, I told him, like, hey, come to Costa Rica, dude, we'll pay everything. Just come, be our cameraman. Chat to Phil. Nah, man, I had to handle business stuff. And I know he's not going to do shit. Yeah. But the thing, I think, dude, I think the problem is, dude, they're too scared because they believe they deserve to be sad. They're like, hey, I haven't done anything for me to be happy. So Damn. I don't deserve this happiness. Damn. So I want to feel that I deserve to be sad and I'm going to stay here. And so I somehow secretly out of nowhere achieve greatness. No, and Dude, if you don't get the fuck out of there, yo, you won't. Yo. No, no. And not only that. Fuck that neighbor. Ooh. Dude, relax, dude, relax. relax. Dude, if I'm paying eighteen hundred dollars a month, you're not paying any. No, I know, dude, like, but dude, he, you don't, he, he doesn't know she can't do shit. No, no, but dude, I, relax. I, but you're putting me in a weirder spot by saying stuff like that. Dude, she doesn't even know who, what we're talking about. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying you're just being loud in general. But I love the passion, dude. It's just I, the, come the, the, on, dude. We thing. live one life. Yeah, but yeah, but I'm yeah, with my girl come for six days. Well, hold and on, if hold you on. like it, you stay longer. If you like it, and you realize the truth, yeah, you can say no. Later. No, but my hand is saying yes. All right, there we go. He's coming for six days, and come the oh, first that's six so days. Weird. Come the that's first so six weird. days. Yeah, because I passed yeah, the passion you're luck, to you. You finally have luck. You just now. changed. You're welcome, buddy. That felt weird, actually. There if I heard the boom, boom, boom sound, you're changing. Like I just entered a different universe. Uh, branch Yo, welcome welcome to, to the good fun times. land buddy Shit. honestly you see i think this is also one of the it things. actually feels weird what the yeah fuck? Dude, because now you're actually living the real youtube lifestyle where it's like this is what it should have been just freedom and this is what i'm realizing where it's like uh also people like they're addicted to sadness and feeling sorry for themselves because i've been there right. where it's like 
oh man, I want people to kind of really convince me and all this other shit. What to, the fuck, dude? You know I would punch saying? people if I ever find out that's what they wanted. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that the mind does that subconsciously where it's like you want attention because things aren't going as you want them to. So you start being like a little bit more difficult or because you want to bask in the sadness still. Like, cause if, if there's a certain like cathartic feeling about that, but Fuck basically being sad, I'm done being sad. There we go. Yeah, he's exactly. coming back. No, he's coming it, back. And, and I'm, All glad, right. you're, All right, I'm glad you're saying that because dude, you do All have right. to actively say like, Dude, fuck being sad. Who the fuck wants to be sad or angry all the time? Like, dude, that's stupid. Imagine at the point, imagine the mentality that you have to have that someone of your friends is telling you, hey, dude, I'll pay for your whole trip to go to, not, not you, another friend. I'll pay for your whole trip by Costa Rica and they still say no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's not like they have a job yeah. that they have to be at. They just say no. I also had somebody no recently tell me um, that they'll pay for my whole trip to go to Tokyo and I said no. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> This is another thing that I, I be, dude, I've been on this motivational fucking podcast binge, but like the guy was saying, take every open door that's given to you. Who gives a fuck about if you think you look needy, if you want them to respect, you know, this, if I had recently a business partner, uh, hook me up with his friend who sells, you know, like well, these parts that I needed. Hook, hook me up with his friend. You gotta uh, say yeah, like we'll uh, connect, connect. With yeah, because the hook buddy. word is like now just means yeah, yeah, yeah. He fucked his friend, but I guess connected is another word, and that's it. That's it. Basically, like he got soon connected. in the future connected will well. Sorry, I'm keep cutting you. Off. Yeah, the friend basically well, he was like, hey man, yeah, I got you. Like I'll give you this big discount or whatever. And he could have. He was like, there's an instant to say no to these things. It's like why? Why are you saying no just because you might look needy in the business friend circle. Oh, he took the disguise, but he's like, no, take every single fucking opportunity. It's stupid. If you don't back to this, if you get offered a free fucking trip, yes. Oh, why would you say no? Well, I, uh, I don't know if they meant it. If they didn't mean it, they shouldn't have fucking offered. I mean, I was saying that I said, you don't have to tell me twice. Yeah, there you go. And I think it's that it's like, dude, and I think you need to accept good things for you. That doesn't make you like, like if someone's giving you a gift, just take it, accept it. Well, I, I told him, I told him the universe tries to change your life. And the more you say no, the universe is going to say, oh, you know what? Fuck you, dude. You get no more opportunities. I gave you these things. You don't take them. I'm going to give them somebody else. And you get in the habit dude, of rejecting all the good stuff. Yeah. And only focusing on the bad stuff. It, dude, he asked for things as well from the... Uh, that's what I'm saying. And I'm saying this from the Bible, line. dude. Asking you shall receive. Asking you shall receive. I want women and multi million dollars. And not, I'll receive but them. But not only that, oh, also. You know what? Actually, no, I can't come. Anyways, he's joking. I forgot. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. The, you the, guys the, called that bluff. All right. Uh, <laughs> Good job. I mean, you shook my hand, dude. I was going to force you, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Uh, Which still pissed me off a little bit, dude. It's a joke he shouldn't make at this moment. It's like it's, 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 it did get him. It's, it's like it's like the camera wasn't recording. You know, yeah, as you're yeah. fucking shooting a scene. It's one of those dude, that you're like, what the fuck? Uh, oh fuck! What was I saying? Um, yeah, like, do you want to ride? Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Like, people have a hard time accepting things. Have you guys seen those videos where the people give away free MacBooks at a college campus and some people say no? Yeah, dude, those people are just, they, they just fuck, they're fucked in life. Even more. I saw this guy, I think Trax is the name of the New York City guy who sells jewelry and he's giving out gold bars. He was like, hey, free gold, free gold. And it's actual real gold. And because like they're so conditioned to not take anything. It's New York, so I kind of get that because it's like, but that's how we're programmed. It fucks with you, dude. Like, literally, you constantly tell the story of yourself. No, I can do it on my own. No, no, it's okay. Oh, don't go through the trouble. It's like, why? That's fake humility. That's fake humility. You should be receiving help. Yes. Oh, I appreciate you. But be authentic, too. If, as, dude, you I know, appreciate also, you. Also, I think... <sighs> and then, boom. Fine. Like, because now, like you said, dude, not only the universe, but you're saying that story in your head. Oh, no. I. It's okay, dude. Uh, maybe next... It's like, what are you doing, dude? What is the point of that? That doesn't, w nobody wins at that point. Nobody wins. But this is not specific to you. I'm just saying in general, something annoying people do. Um, also, I think, uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, something about being selfish. Oh, 
Oh, be more selfish. Yeah. Shit. So, I mean, like I noticed when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, those, all those ages, I was extremely selfish in a good way. Because in order to do YouTube and to do social media, you need to be a narcissist in a way. And then uh, I don't know if it was the Amsterdam thing. I think it was things slowly building up and the Amsterdam thing was the final thing. Uh, maybe the first thing was when I pranked that that Tinder girl. Yeah. And I realized, what am I doing with these pranks? That was crazy. Yeah. I haven't seen this prank. Maybe you want to explain okay, it? Okay, I'll explain it shortly because I don't want to bring too much attention to it. But I... I I don't know. I would see like people doing Tinder pranks on YouTube. So it made me think, oh, I should do that too. So I matched with a girl on Tinder. I took her out on a date as a prank. I pulled up in a really beat up old car. And she completely hated that I did that. She hated that I used her. She thought she was going on a real date. Like she got ready and everything. Yeah. And then I think the biggest thing that hit me was the fact that I saw her. She had to go and walk back into her apartment with her roommates. And now her roommates were like, wait, I thought you were going on a date. And now she has to explain what just, right? Doesn't that make it even heavier? No, it, yeah. it makes it horrible 10 times because he was just shooting a YouTube video. And then they're like, what? And yeah. then she has to say it three more times. That's something I thought of a couple of days later because she's in college. So she probably has roommates, you know? Yeah. And, and whenever I that's was like, crazy. oh, I'm just joking. This is a prank. It, like the car broke down. And then, you know, I asked her to fix the engine. After all that funny haha moments, I was like, oh, I'm just kidding. It's just a prank. I told my cameraman to come from behind the tree. Look, it's just a prank. It's just a YouTube show. Ha ha. And then, you know, I don't know why. I was so blind at that moment that I thought her reaction was going to be, oh, my God, that's so funny. I'm on a prank show. Oh, you got me. But her, her reaction was like that twitchy face where it's like you're about to cry. Oh and oh my god, dude, I'm such a terrible person. That's actually oh. horrible. And then and then and then and then she said, and this line stuck with me forever. She said, "Well, nice doing business with you," and walked off. Damn. And that was the start of me. That was the start of the loathing for for my pranks. That's where I was like, I don't want to do pranks anymore. How have I come this far, being this blind, and I barely realized it now of what I'm doing to people. Obviously, that's an extreme example. Some pranks are no, lighthearted. No, that that should have, but yeah, that's it, what or, should have happened probably to Logan Paul, you know, where he learned after the first time where he filmed the yeah, dead body hanging. He probably didn't get that light, yeah, realization, and he still hasn't. It's hard, dude, when you get so much success from being bad, and you're uploading daily. No, yeah. I'm saying like and grinding. Well, every even day. after the dead body, the thing is like he came back, but then it's like. Doing the bad things gets you so much success so quick. And if there's no consequences, what would make you, you know? Yeah, and I think, yeah, degeneracy gets rewarded on the internet. And, uh, I mean, would y'all like promote a drink that has that much sugar and caffeine to kids? Like, would y'all do it? Yeah, that's what I don't like about Prime as well. It's so, 200 what? milligrams of caffeine. But would when did that become normal? I mean, that's horrible for to kids. To sell to kids. I remember monsters, people were like, don't drink monsters. And kids would drink them at school. But like there would be like warnings against monsters. When I drink over a hundred milligrams of caffeine, I start shaking. Well, you know how many uh, coffee cups that is? No, that's four, right? Two hundred milligrams. Eight. Eight. One cup has about twenty-five grams of caffeine. Holy fuck! No, twenty-five it's to thirty. I think it's fifty. Yeah. Well, maybe no. a little normal size, like a small. Dude, these mug. kids are gonna I be fucked. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah. For for like a like a mug. Yeah, I can see that's twenty. Doesn't doesn't caffeine make you feel happy though? I remember someone telling me like, "Hey, dude, it makes you like very happy and excited when you drink caffeine." No, it makes you. Well, happy jittery. is a side effect of energy. No, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. like it gets you like hyped yeah. up and all that. Yeah, but even if I order just a latte with two shots, I mean, I know I'm on the lower side of tolerance, but yeah, I start like tweaking out. Like, oh fuck, oh. I. <sighs> yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's abnormal, and, and here's the thing. Like, I mean, no one is free from being a hypocrite yeah we all do bad stuff we all do bad stuff and i just think that like uh i mean there's a whole scamming you know zoo animal like nft or whatever shit that's going on with him uh i'm like oh that's kind of shitty but like i get it i i suppose that like if the world keeps telling you you're superman at some point you will believe it and you'll just behave that type of way or or every business sells these drinks so what difference does it make if i sell them yeah they're and already being sold might as well me make money correct that's another thing that's that, a, yeah and 
it's hard to do the right thing. And I think that's the most complicated part about being a human being. It's like, fuck, I don't know what's right a lot of the times. I honestly don't. And I used to have, I have strong beliefs, but then I like look at them and I was like, damn, like how many people are hurting from that belief probably. And there's like, there's nothing inconsequential, I suppose. So, and that's what we shouldn't judge dude, because we could be doing all the things that are bad for kids. Yeah, totally. You know, and the response could be like, well, their parents should take better care of them. These are kind of the, well, never mind. (laughs) Uh, yeah, basically there's no wrong. I, I was going to say something right that doesn't make sense to make public because it's something we're working on. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I think it's a good place to wrap, dude. Yeah, I think so too. It's an hour, 20 minutes. Okay. Any yeah. last thoughts? So you are going to Costa Rica for six days. And if you enjoy it, we'll go longer. Um, and also keep in mind, like, yeah, I don't think I can go longer. And the reason is. The reason is you're gonna think the reason is dumb, but I it's because it's because Alexis is coming to Austin and he has an Airbnb booked and everything, and I'll be such a bad friend if I no, but stay not longer. if you tell him earlier, not if you tell him now. Hey, dude, this came up. What do you think? I was telling Alexis before I moved here. I was like, dude, you should just try out Austin for a little bit, see if you want to live here. And then when he comes to Austin and I'm in fucking Costa Rica, yeah, that's why I said six. But days. you can cancel an Airbnb six days prior. He won't lose anything. You can't. Hey, dude, just move it up two weeks. You can't do that. Okay, I mean, I'll... Do, do you remember the second part of the short film that I made for you? Yeah. Do you remember what it said? Yeah, stop giving away your time. Correct. Time, that is. Exactly, there you go. Yeah, you have fucking to be more sounds selfish. are fucking stuck in my what mind. What do I do? Alex is going to be like, oh, thanks for telling me. No, no, no. I'll exactly, rebook exactly. it in two weeks. And here's what's happening right now, that you're thinking the worst case scenario of you telling him in advance, hey, dude, let's delay this trip. And you're thinking, fuck you, piece of shit. I can't believe you need someone last minute. Probably what's going to happen is like, ah, oh, man, all right, well, sounds good. Have fun. You know, we'll, we'll definitely catch it on the next one. Like, that's probably the answer. But not only that, like, don't... I mean, this sounds like you need to be more selfish. Specifically, you, I guess so. Was that that selfish? Like, hey, dude, just no, move no, it up two weeks. No, no, but selfish isn't bad. You need to disassociate that too, because dude, this is your life, your time. Like, if you want to use your time for something else, you don't know many people' explanations. You owe some people, but I think this falls under the camp of like, hey, dude, uh, you're gonna get your money back. Very low risk. He can always come back. It's not like you're only going to be in Austin for three weeks. Well, I didn't know that you could cancel your Airbnb. I thought, because when I booked my Airbnb in uh, in Amsterdam, it was like, you can't refund it. You can't. No, no. I mean, uh, there is options to, I mean, my, our Airbnbs in Costa Rica, I can still cancel them two days before. So, so I mean, Airbnbs you can't, but I'm yeah. sure he got one that you could. Yeah, if I had to bet, I mean, because some of them are like very specific, like, hey, dude, this is a prime location. Yeah, because also he got it without telling me before. Well, that's he another, just sent a screenshot of his reservation, and I was like, "Huh." And he can always ask, uh, like a lot of Airbnb hosts, they're good at customer service. He can ask, "Hey, can you move the dates to this?" And they'll be like, "Okay." Yeah. So worst case scenario, like, but feels right. I never realized that. You sometimes, even us. I mean, maybe I don't, but people do think the worst case scenario. Yeah. Oh, do I cancel it because he's gonna hate me? Dude, it can just be like, oh, dude, okay, I'll just move it up two weeks. It actually works better for me. Yeah, my mind does I that. actually wanted to cancel. Thank God he told me because two weeks work better for me. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, dude, I didn't want to cancel on you. So th- I think this is another lesson of where, like, you have to be okay w- with people snapping at you, dude. Where, like, <sighs> you can't be that protective of, of... And I know this sounds like, hey, be an asshole. I'm not giving a license if to... If it was last... Tomorrow, it would be an asshole move. Yeah, yeah. But a week ahead, dude, it's not. Yeah, a week ahead, I think that falls within reason, and he can get his money back. And like I said, dude, he's going to come back eventually. Like, um, yeah, I, I don't think you, anyone loses anything. They it's like, hey, let's just push that to March. I mean, it's way more work dude, for you to fly from Costa Rica just yeah, for way, that. That's 20 if you're times go so much. for six days, dude, that... I mean, you're. Uh, I mean, six days is a lot of time. No, but we're most people for the take excuse. trips we're for, for like excuse. three days. But it's gonna be six not days. Two, at, not international trips. That's it's crazy. international. Dude. It's gonna be at the beach a week. Yeah, I guess that's true. We're gonna be at, we're <laughs> gonna be at the beach a week and then in the city a week, and we're gonna go check out volcanoes and shit like that. So, all right, uh, um, we'll talk about it. Um, all right. Uh, well, yeah, and I'm just saying slice? it out loud because dude, this is like lessons that. 
you have to keep learning. And I'm speaking for about myself where I'm like, You have to Fuck. keep sweeping the, the, the floor. Yeah, I'm like, God damn. Because like, it's just, so easy to forget. Like The floor uh, doesn't stay. That especially as more money gets involved. I think when more money gets involved, you have more of a reason. And uh, anyways, I, I don't want to restart like the... Well, I was, I was going to say, dude, um, honestly, there's something I'm glad I haven't blown up until the age that I am now. And here's why. Because, dude, I think if you blow up when you're young and you get all this money, all these things, you lose perspective on what the world really is. Because you enter a reality that's not real for 99% of the people. So you develop personalities that are not real and yeah. expectations that are not real, dude. But now that I'm almost 30, if I blow up now, dude, trust me, dude, I'll appreciate everything. And even then, dude, I've become a man of the people because I know how 90% of the people live. I've done it for 30 years. So when yeah. I talk, when I say jokes, when I, I travel, always... the films that I make, everybody can relate to them. Yeah, well, that's what, that's another thing. If you have to make art, art demands a sac uh, like you to pour yourself into your art. If there's nothing to pour because you limited all these experiences and you never fucking tried anything well, new. Well, no, a TikToker that blew up at 18 and become a millionaire, what art can he create that pe most people can that's relate what, to? That's what I'm saying. No, and it's like there's nothing, but there's also nothing new. There's no depth there. Yeah, I guess that's what you're saying. There's I no mean, depth. I, I can always, tell I you. always think about how much it probably sucks for Justin Bieber's upbringing. Dude, he was famous since I mean, he was a fucking kid. He was so famous to where it got crazy. dangerous for him. He almost died because of all the stuff he was doing. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, like I used to be so jealous and I guess I still am to a certain extent, but I get Jim Carrey now where he's fucking walking around. He was like, I wish everyone was this rich and famous to realize like this shit does not fucking matter. It's it's and worth it like, for like, he's right. It's worth it for a little bit, dude. But then you realize the deeper stuff of life, the money yeah. can't bring you. Money of him can't bring you the stuff that really matters in life. Correct. Because if you can be in a mansion. Look, this is what happens. You're in a mansion and you're like, oh, do I have nobody to hit up that yeah. genuinely wants to hang out with me? Yes. And that genuinely yeah. cares when I tell them I'm feeling sad. Yeah. I have nobody. And it's like, yeah, I have all these cars, but where do I go? Yeah, you're renting relationships because once your stock goes down, if your career plummets or whatever, like Shia LaBeouf was talking on a podcast with this guy, I forget his name, but he's he was the Punisher in the TV series. And... Uh, Oh, I know who it is. The guy from Breaking John Bad? John Bernthal. Breaking Bad? Name. Yes. Uh, Walking Dead. Oh, Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, Fury? Yes, he was in Fury as well. So I, when Shia LaBeouf, all the allegations came, everyone abandoned him. And he was one of the few guys who stuck with him. Um, and he was a dude, I appreciate you, dog. He was like, everyone abandoned me. He was talking about like his family didn't show up to his A meetings and anything. And his current wife, Mia Goth, who was in Pearl... Like, she's the lead actress. That's his wife or baby mama thing, whatever. And uh, she showed up in between shoots and movies. And he's saying, and I put her through all this bullshit. I brought this on her and she's calling me in between movies. And she was the only person who showed up and you showed up. And he's talking about this because he's been also famous for a while. And I thought of that moment because the way he describes it, everyone should go listen to it. It's fucking incredible where you're like, God damn. It's like worse being famous, going through like a bad PR thing, and then you have no one. Like there's so many layers of bullshit because every day you're reminded that you're a piece of shit, basically. And you read the news, ah, oh, this piece of shit, comments, everything. And then even your agent drops you and all that. I'm but like, people say, but you're a millionaire, relax. Correct. And I'm like, dude, money does not fix that shit. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. Like... And obviously, uh, like I've been fucking dead broke, but even then, like, I remember like that feeling is, um, the loneliness feeling like they're famous and rich and all this, and they don't really have anyone. Yeah, dude, fuck that. Like I well, would not take that. There's a quote in the Bible, dude, that says it's easier for, I mean, I don't know the real quote, but it's like basically a poor per. it's easier for a camel to fit through a needle yeah, than for it, a rich person to get in heaven. Something like that. It's easier for, yeah, come kind of to go through the eye of a needle than for, I think rich and prideful was like the thing, but rich, let's say for rich men to get to heaven. And and I think heaven means happiness in life. That's what I think. The heaven doesn't mean like what people imagine heaven yeah, yeah. to be. I think it means it's easier 
basically it's very hard to be happy when you're rich and famous you have everything yeah it's very hard for you to find true happiness dude and here we are sprinting at a million fucking miles and that's what i keep hour. telling you dude why are you rushing dude where are you going that's all yeah, the, yeah, yeah this is it phil yeah yeah this is it no i made a fucking reel about this but that's what i'm saying we're like you dude, guys are sprinting dude i want to get tv just i want to get all this i'm like dude you're gonna miss being in this apartment trying to come up with ideas with your friends and all this so dude rushing it where are you going yeah and i think that's the difference where it's not rushing doesn't mean stop it like rushing doesn't mean like or don't work not, not rushing doesn't mean stop right it means like slow down look around ferris bueller said it best you know if you don't stop and look around every now and then in life it'll pass you i'm paraphrasing but like that movie's fucking great dude everything is that like who gives a fuck? Like, the tomorrow, I don't have tomorrow. And you're here saying some bullshit, bro. No, but I, I can't go because this person that I might think might get mad at me. I want to shit on your chest. Think about it. Like, Jesus. he's not going to lose anything. He's not going to lose anything. No one loses everything. The only You're robbing yourself of this experience. In fact, let me call him right now. I have a word with no, him. No, and then, dude, here's what <laughs> happens. So I told him, Steezy, like, basically, that's what I told him. Like, hey, dude, life, has, like, the universe has this life for you. And most people reject it because they say no to things. I was told them, if you ever see a girl that's very beautiful and you feel something in your heart, go and say hi. No matter where yes. it is, just be like, hey, fuck, I don't know what is going on, <laughs> but I want to meet you. And, and that's and authentic. And if she says no, yeah. go for it, dude. But what can happen is, like, oh, hi. And she turns out to be the most beautiful person for your life. And you're like, wow. And dude, the, the thing, dude, there's something about gut feelings, dude. <laughs> gut is the universe telling you something but it can't explain it because there's so many factors that your brain cannot calculate them all it's saying is this is the person for you yes so to feel it and dude people are used to not doing it dude. feeling is the way so dude, if you just do things like or something's like fuck dude i don't know why but i need to do this i can't explain it to you guys i need to do this yes if That's you have a conviction you know. like that yeah that is and the more open. you get used to following the feeling the more it will arise and, and the, the more you see it dude, That's what i've learned how to do recently and dude, the feelings I've are, are never 100% positive, by the way. No, it, they're just, a little uncomfortable. Um, it's like, because it's scary. It's like, you know, you have a conviction that you have to do it, but it is still scary. Yeah. Like, I mean, people say, how can that person be so brave? Are they not afraid? What's the quote? It's, it's not that they're... Cur yeah. Courage is not lack of fear is acting in spite of fear. Yeah. Dude, people who are courageous don't do it because they don't have fear. They do it in spite of the fear. They're like, I'm scared, but I'm still going to do it. That's or courage. maybe they're scared of what comes from not doing it. Yes. And the fear of, of, of the opposite is also true. I feel like, like you didn't digest what I just said right now. Yes, that's a different quote. But yes, yes, it also ties into it. No, it's not different. It's, just, it's, it's essentially it's the same, the same uh, thing. The principle but I think is it's, like, it also I think it's the, the loss. Better than how you said it. All right, I'll take that. I mean, I'll take that. I'll, I'll rethink about it later. <laughs> the loss of an opportunity should hurt more than your current situation. Like, that's when you know an opportunity is for you. Where, like, you didn't fucking talk to basically the love of your life. She ended up being, like, this cute, uh, bubbly, like, writer. She's artistic. She lives here. And you robbed yourself of that just because you wanted to stay in the same situation. And that's... I'm talking about myself more than anyone, too. Like, we all do this. Anyways, I'd, rather, I live, I I'd rather live in the certainty of the bad outcome than the ambiguity of... The non-existent. Exactly. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Rate us on iTunes. Uh, give us comments, uh, shares. Share with a friend who's also a wisdom-seeking degenerate. <laughs> oh, dude, imagine the next podcast we shoot is in a volcano in the background. I don't uh, know about a volcano, but a volcano sounds great. So, anyways, <laughs> make sure to follow us everywhere. That was a Love good you guys call like back. A dude, volcano. How, what am I saying it wrong? A volcano. By the way, have you guys heard the album Journals by Justin Bieber? No. Is it good? That is a good album. When did I it became come out? a believer. When did it come out? It came out in 2014. See, oh, that's, shit. Bro, See, that's the proper so way good. of saying believer. That context is the same believer? Believer. <laughs> well, how come you say the second B with a V? <laughs> it's right, well, uh, we a mystery of nature. Mm -hmm.